I'd like to welcome you all for to attending uh, the, this evening's webinar on Kickstart Your VA Business. My name is Jackie Workman. I am the chairman of the IAVA. We would like to um, just give you a few pointers. The purpose of the call to tonight is to share our experience in one side and also to give you an idea of what the VA world is about and if it is right for you. Before I start, uh, I'd just like to let you know that all of your mics are muted for this call. Uh, if you'd like to ask any questions, please use a chat box that is down in the lower right-hand corner, and we'll answer any questions towards the end of the presentation. If you could switch off any of distractions that are around you, and... That leaves me to finally introduce the other two ladies on this call presenting, Helen Jacoby of Inspired PA and V Smith of My Super VA. Okay, I would probably best if I start off, my name as I say is Jackie Workman of the International Association of Virtual Assistants. And a bit of my background, uh, I worked in various financial companies before I became a virtual assistant. Um, I always knew that I wanted to become uh, my own self-employed business owner. I never really knew what it was going to be uh, until 16 years ago, I finally decided I was going to go alone and become a freelance PA and bookkeeper. I therefore set up Jay's Office Services and I worked for many varied clients, web designers, accountants, script writers. Script writers were absolutely fun to work with and now it's predominantly coaches. After I set up my own business, Jay's Office Services, I very quickly went on to co-found the IABA in 1999 with two other ladies. And then recently, uh, because I've now become a an ex, uh, certified coach, um, I also have Your Business Aunt, where I do mentoring and coaching for small business. And I think that's enough of me for a moment. If I'd like to hand over to Helen. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Great to have you with us today. Um, just a, a very potted history. Um, I spent about 20 years um, in the corporate world, working mainly at C-suite level and also latterly with high net worth individuals. Uh, um, and as much as I loved my job, and I would have quite happily done it for another 20 years. I'd always had a hankering um, to run my own business, or at least have a go at running my own business. Um, but I'm quite risk adverse as a person, so the decision took me quite a long time to make. Um, when I eventually I did, um, it was 2008, and I set up the Inspired PA. Uh, and actually on Friday of this week, I'll be celebrating my six-year business anniversary, um, so I will be at the spa <laughs> for the day. Um, my business focuses, um, as well as being a virtual PA, um, the specific sort of niches that we work in are um, event management and association management, so working with membership organisations. Um, I joined the IAVA as a board member uh, probably about 18 months ago, um, working with Jackie and V and, and other ladies as well. Um, and you know the IAVA is a virtual assistant or support organisation run by virtual assistants. Um, and also a couple of years ago, I was lucky and humble enough to receive uh, the VA of the Year Award uh, here in the UK, which was um, very well received and a lovely surprise. Uh, and with that, I'm going to hand over to V, who's going to tell you a little bit about herself. Thank you and welcome everyone. Well, 
Um, I too um, have background in PA, office manager in the corporate world. Um, my last job I was working for, when I joined the company, I was working for the boss from hell, but I turned him into a nice cake buying boss. Um, the only downside to that, that job was that I had a two hour commute each way, so I had to drop my kids off at Childminders, various people, and I hated the fact that it took, you know, I was wasting four hours a day and I was missing out on being there for my two kids. So my break came when, the, um, with redundancy, um, the company I was working for had a man management buyout and as part of their exit strategy was to sell off all the subsidiaries we were head office to. So eventually we'd have nothing to be the head office to. So in that time I was looking at my other options and um, my, you know, I had two very undesirable options. I didn't want to be commuting or working uptown anymore. And I didn't want to, uh, taking a job locally meant taking a huge salary drop. And for one thing, I couldn't afford it. And secondly, you know, why should I, with more experience now, or then as I have done, suddenly be worth less money? So I then came across this term virtual assistant reading in a PA magazine, um, read up on it, and that appealed to me. You work from home, you work for several different clients, and it was a more flexible way of working. So I did a bit of due diligence, rang a few other virtual assistants up um, to find out whether it was financially viable, you know, whether they were making a living from it, because that was most important for me. Um, the feedback came good, so when I got made redundant, that was in 2005, I launched my business in January 2006. I had, um, I had put a, together a business plan and achieved my financial goal for my, well, my five-year financial goal, I achieved that within my first year. So. And I haven't looked back. Um, I've now built up an associate team um, who helped me look after um, all the clients that we've got, um, who range from top life coaches, who I've got a, a coach on my books who coaches celebrities and I've published two books. She's been on TV. And I've also got a client who's the second largest distributor in the UK for a leading company who collects a six-figure bonus check every year. Um, so I've also joined, I'm also on the IADA as a board member. Um, that's enough about us. Now I'd like to hand over to you guys who joined us on the call and let us know where you are at. So if you could type in the chat box, um, and number one, if you've not started your business, your VA business yet, or a two, if you've only just started your VA business, or three, four, I've been going for a few months, four, I've been going for over a year, or five, you're still considering your options. If you could type that in the box, in the chat box now, that would be good. Okay, that's great, we've got some good answers there. So. The next thing that we want to share with you is the best lessons that we've learned, um, in, particularly in starting up our businesses. So for me, um, it was getting clients when I first started. Um, and I've been told that you've got to go to networking meetings. That's where you meet a lot of other business owners who might, who are potential clients for using a virtual assistant. So, I went along to a network meeting and one of the things that you have to do is stand up and give a 60 second pitch and that absolutely terrified me because whilst I was really good at my job and supporting my boss and making him look good, I was hopeless at me blowing my own trumpet, standing up in front of a room full of strangers and, and um, being the centre of attention. It was a complete nervous wreck. Um, so all I could do, because it, it, you know, each person takes a turn, and all I could do was count down the ladies until it was my turn. And then I'd stand up, blurt out something, can't even remember what it was, sit down and then spend the rest of the other people giving their one minute presentation. I'd just be recovering from it. So I hadn't, wouldn't take in anybody else's pitches or what they were doing or who they were or anything um, because I was such a nervous wreck. But I knew I had to, to step out of my comfort zone and get good at this because this was the way to get work. It was, good way to meet other business owners who could also refer me. So this networking group that I had joined, they ran networking skills workshops, so I went along to them and learnt about it, 
learned how to calm my nerves and and um, you know breathing techniques so that you don't forget what you're about to say. And just practice, practice, practice. Went along to as many networking meetings as I could. Just didn't worry that I was making a fool of myself because I'd have another chance to 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 pitch, you know, to practice pitching. And and the other thing that I learned, which is a good tip to share, is about being memorable. Um, so it's not enough to just stand up and blurt out a load of words, but actually do do something to be memorable. So my trade was, or my um, trick was, I had a load of tennis balls, and I'd take one for every skill that I um, could, could that could they could outsource, and then make as if to juggle them. And of course, they'd go everywhere, and that would made everyone laugh. And that was a very memorable, memorable way of um, presenting my pitch. Um, then coming back, you know, as a sort of synopsis to this, um, a year later, that same networking group where I was absolutely terrified and couldn't, couldn't do more than count down until it was my turn, I was actually chairing that group. So the lesson learned here is that it, you do have to practice, you do have to be prepared to step out of your comfort zone, and it does become much easier. And I love pitching and standing up and being the centre of attention and, and um, talking about what I do. So over to Helen. Now, please, she's going to share her best lesson learned. Helen? Helen, you may want to unmute your mic. We can't hear you. Okay, we seem to have lost her. Helen for a moment. Okay, so Jackie, maybe we'll go on to you then and you can share your best lesson learned. Okay, well, sorry, I'm just checking that Helen is unmuted here. Here she goes. Helen, over to you, lovely. Am I back in the room? You are. <laughs> sorry about right. that. Can you hear me now? We can. Lovely. Yeah. Great to be back with you. <laughs> Sorry about that for those that are listening. Um, best lesson learned. I can honestly say, hand on heart, I have not stopped learning in the last six years um, since I've been running my business. But the one I think is probably most relevant um, to those of you who are either starting up or thinking about starting up is I gave up my day job, my very healthily paid city job. Um, Resigned, gave it up, started a business, and and I guess naively expected to get clients, you know, within a. Um, that didn't happen, and anyway, it certainly can happen if you you're very lucky and you plan. But I I, I did I I gave that up and and went headlong into. I'm kind of an all or nothing person, so I went headlong into. Um, setting my business up, going to every networking and meeting that was available in order to connect with clients and <clears throat> or potential clients, um, and obviously hoping some of those would come on board. Uh, what I didn't realise is that networking is about building relationships, and building good relationships takes time. Um, so I got to the point where there was very little revenue coming in, and I, and I did manage to to get some clients on board within two or three months, um, but because I was quite, shall I say, desperate <laughs> by that point, I took on anyone um, that said they needed some support without really thinking, is this the right client for me, am I the right VA for them, um, so consequently I took everyone on and ended up spreading myself really thin um, and also undercharging. That was that's the you know the bottom line literally um, is that I wasn't charging enough because I was wanting to get clients on board. So if I talked rates with people and they went, oh that's a bit steep, I uh, I back down and negotiate. So consequently my revenue was lower than it should have been, but I was dashing around left, right, and centre, supporting all these clients. So that was probably my biggest lesson and. About a year or so in, most of those clients drifted off, um, and they were, for a variety of reasons, um, most of them, albeit they were all lovely people and I love working with them, 
either their businesses um, were failing, and, and don't forget this was the start of the financial crisis as well, um, or they sold, or they moved on and did something else, um, or wanted to um, keep the cost down uh, even less. So I lost all my clients, and literally, I was that was serious panic mode at that point, and I was like, I have stepped off the cliff here, and I'm in free fall. I don't know where this is going to end up. Um, thank goodness, literally, I, I hand on heart, within two weeks, the phone started ringing, and that was purely because I'd invested the previous year, 18 months, going out networking, connecting with people, and those relationships started to come good. And at that point, I started charging what I was worth. Um, and since then, um, I've had a full book of clients, the business has grown, I work with a team of associates, um, and I haven't looked back. Uh, so that was absolutely my biggest lesson. Uh, Jackie, back over to you. Thanks, Helen. Uh, my biggest challenge was, well, I have two, but I'll tell you about one of them tonight, and that was being taken advantage of. Um, I'm probably the dinosaur here. I've been, as I said, I've been going for 16 years. When I started, there were no support forums. Uh, people had never heard of the term virtual assistant. Uh, freelancers, possibly, but there were few of us. So really, I had no one to turn to, to um, learn the wisdom and knowledge. So I learned the hard way. And one of the things for me was security, uh, as I said, being taken advantage of. It all came about when I was advertising. Now, you're going to be going out there advertising, marketing in different medias and different formats. And for me at the time, again, times have moved on. So, you know, you've got social media now. I didn't have that. I used the old local rag or uh, local press, um, advertised in that. And from that, as soon as my ad went into the paper, I had an absolute, well, deluge of uh, phone calls from charitable companies. And whilst most of these charitable companies were kosher, um, we all like to give uh, the good ones really played at the heartstrings and they cost me a fortune for absolutely no return so they would basically sell to me and say oh you know we've got a 70 odd thousand coverage um, and your advert will be on the calendar for the year the desk calendars or it will be on something um, very prominent within an office and <clears throat> of course I thought oh charity I've got to give so it cost me big time financially and I can honestly say I did not get one client from them the other side of this the security side is that we also a few of us had um, calls from rather fraudulent companies and they would phone us and say oh we're some charity or other and we've just finished your advert for you we've just sent over the template and the invoice is with it can you pay it and then you start in this whole spill about paying them and not paying them and that they've done an advert for you that you know nothing about and they really try and pull it uh pull it pull the wool over your eyes you know and put you in a bad position with them so lesson learned in two areas there and then the third area was uh with friends funny enough and maybe you've all been told already about working with friends and not charging them and doing favors for them oh my goodness i was give 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 and there was one particular friend who I said who was moving and I said that I would take their post for them temporarily until they'd settled in and oh my goodness that was the worst thing I've ever done as 
I had their debt collectors turning up at my door. So I can honestly say I have never taken post like that for a friend or even worked for a friend since. Um, and I've always made sure that I've set boundaries, pricing and everything for whoever I work for. So that's probably my area for now. Um, how about you? Let's ask you who uh, the call is on the line here. How about putting something in the chat box here, down in the right hand corner there. Uh, what's your biggest obstacle, obstacle uh, or challenge? I'd love to um, see what you've got to say. Now, it could be that you're worried about finding clients, uh, generating an income. Uh, maybe, you know, what's keeping you awake at night. So just type away down in the box there and just let us know what your, you know, what your challenges or obstacles are at this moment that you're facing. OK, I'm going to hand back to you, Helen. Lovely. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, um, for putting your thoughts in there. It's actually really encouraging to see um, that a lot of what the things that you're concerned about are, please can I assure you, you're not alone at all. And the, the very common themes that people um, that people have and thoughts and concerns when they're considering whether this is the right thing for them. Um, and your answer is actually very much in line to the, the research that we've done as the IAVA. Um, we're kind of all over the place, actually, in the sense of we, we often exhibit at um, you know, major shows, we present at events, um, and through our membership, um, we we have regular meetups. So we you know we get the keep our finger on the pulse in terms of what's going on and what people's concerns are. We've also been approached a lot over particularly the last sort of 18 months, two years, from people who are considering this um, as an option, and, and we're asked the same questions um, time and time again. So. What we decided to do is um, bring our 30 years, well, between the three of us, 30 years of experience specifically in the VA business. Um, and we've put together a program, and we've called it the 6M Kickstart Your VA Business Program, which you can see. Um, the reason for that is we feel that we can share from our learning and the mistakes that we've made. Um, so we can help others get going on their business and help and guide them through that process. The reason it's called the 6M program is there are six modules and funnily enough they all begin with an M. So the six areas that we cover, and we'll go into them in a little bit more detail in a moment, we'll look at mindset, really important when you're starting up a business, money, the all important question, management, marketing, the materials that you need and also your master plan or your business plan. So we're going to go through them one by one and Jackie's going to give you an overview of the mindset module. Oh, thanks Helen. Okay, uh, the mindset, we'll be talking about the transition from employed to self-employed uh, because basically you'll be running your business and a lot of virtual assistants just don't grasp this fact. They just think, okay, I'm working from home and the work's going to come into me. There's a, a huge important element here that you are running a business. So we'll be talking about that, the transition, uh, motivation, because uh, you need to be motivated uh, or maybe you are a very motivated person without needing motivation from others. Um, your routine, uh, we'll be talking about that, the freedom, you know, do you actually get time off? Do you have to work, goodness knows how many hours to make a living? Um, the not having backup departments, you know, you've come from employed where you've got problems with IT, so you just call the IT department. Well, when you're on your own, it's a different story. Managing your clients, uh, taking ownership of your business, you being the boss. We'll be talking about your weaknesses and how to turn them into your into strengths. 
uh, not being afraid of facing up to your fears. Uh, one of those big ones is going to be networking, believe me. And we still struggle with that. Even the best of us struggle with the networking. And visualisation, uh, we would like to ask you, you know, where you see yourselves down the line, your bucket list, details about your family, friends. I touched on friends earlier on, you know, where do you set the boundaries with them? That's mindset. There's lots in there, lots I haven't even mentioned. The second module uh, is going to be money. And this we will be talking about the best practice for your financial management. Uh, this is going to include, you know, your fees, what you're going to be charging your clients, how to keep your books. So your bookkeeping, whether you do it or whether you get someone else to do it, how much you can claim back in expenses or what you can claim back in expenses, self-assessment, the IR35. Uh, also, we'll be talking about savings, national insurance two and four. Uh, whether you should be a sole trader, whether you should be a PLC or limited company, bank accounts and much more. And I think that takes you over to Helen for the management module. Mm, thank you. Um, we're going to split this, this management module into two categories. So looking at business management, good practice guides, and also client management. When you've secured those clients, how do you manage that client relationship going forwards? There are some really key things um, that I implore anyone um, who's setting up in the VA world um, to adhere to. First, it sets you apart or sets your um, stall out in terms of being a professional business. Um, and we'll be looking at things like data protection, what are the requirements there, you're likely to be using and possibly sharing um, client data. Um, we'll look at contracts, um, both with your clients and with any potential associates that you might um, decide to work with, how you manage your time, um, looking at non-disclosure, often you'll be asked by a client to sign a non-disclosure agreement um, and really importantly also insurance, what insurances do you need um, as a business to protect yourself, that's really critical, no one is going to protect your business um, if you don't. Um, I'm going to, I know I sound a bit legalistic when I say that, but <laughs> I passionately believe these things are absolutely critical to helping make your business um, a success. Um, and we'll be looking at boundaries as well um, and how to set those um, and all sorts of, you know, how do you work with associates as well? If you you don't have a skill but you know someone who does, how do you uh, work with that associate and what protection is there for you? Um, and also what are the benefits for the associate? We'll cover all of that good stuff during that module. And I'm going to hand back over to V, uh, who's going to tell you a bit more about the marketing module. The marketing module is all about how you get work. Um, so if we cover everything from your, your personal branding, how you dress when you go out and meet clients or potential clients, and networking meetings. We talk about your company branding as well. So we think from the fonts you use, the colours, logos, whether you should have one or not. Um, and we talk about advertising, paid and free advertising. There's huge don't have to pay for any advertising actually, I don't, um, but where you can get advertising that's not going to cost anything other than your time. We cover networking in this module, so your elevator pitch, we cover informal networking, so what to say when some, if you're at a party and someone asks you what do you do um, and what's the best way of, of answering that question so that it could stimulate you know, possible work or referral. Um, we cover social media, which is a great tool now for getting work. Um, we cover websites as well, whether you should have one, what, whether you do it yourself, whether you pay someone else to do it, what do you have included in it, what should you specify, um, and the best way to lay out a website. We cover forums as another medium to getting work, um, and membership forums like, for example, the IAVA and other networking groups. Um, then the next module is the materials module. So this covers everything that you need to run 
a VA business. So it includes your office setup, you know, with the environment that you have, desk, chair, the space you work in, whether it's going to be shared with um, a, you know, multi-use room in your house, um, like your kitchen or your lounge, or whether you are able to set aside a special room in your in your house or like in, I have a, an office out in my garden, it's a purpose-built um, studio. Um, we also cover other options to work in spaces, like for instance, um, jelly is, is one option. Um, we cover things like stationery, what you actually need, the software that you need, the equipment, computers, tablets, printers, faxes, um, whether you have them already, whether you need them at all, um, what the alternatives are and we cover the software that you need to to actually work your business. Um, we cover tool, um, communication tools, phones, mobiles, um, voice over IP, Skype, and we cover storage and file sharing options so you can file share with your clients and your associates. Um, we also cover software that will help manage you and your business, for example, time tracking so that you can charge clients the the correct amount um, of time that you've worked on a particular project, if that's how you're going to bill for um, bill clients. We talk about um, what tools you can use to manage your clients and projects, um, to-do lists, you know, what the options are, um, what we use. And then we have the final module, which is the master plan I'll hand back to Helen. Thanks, V. Um, so, yeah, the sixth and final module is really a consolidation exercise of the previous five modules. So it's bringing together everything that you've learned. And, and as you go through these modules, you are absolutely, well, I'm, I'm pretty sure you will have a ton of ideas. And, and also have, you know, as we go through, a much clearer picture of if you're going to go for this, what, how does your business look and feel? You know, what's your vision and your planning? So what we'll do is we'll bring in, and um, again, we'll distill those previous five modules into a master plan uh, for you to take away and, you know, get going with it. Sets out, again, sets out your stall, what do you want to achieve and how are you going to achieve it? Now, business plans historically, um, by reputation, are very formal. I personally don't think they need to be. Um, it very much depends on the type of person you are and what is going to work for you. The only thing I would say is if you are going to go to a bank or for a loan or to a lender or maybe even an investor, they will want to see a really detailed business plan. But if that's not the case, then absolutely keep it more informal, but it's a really great guide for you to take your business forward and something that should be revisited as you go. Um, so just to sort of wrap up those six modules, that really is, we've pulled together our 30 years of experience and between us we've made, you know, a fair few mistakes that we don't want you to make. So that's why we've done this, so you can sit on our shoulders and give you the best chance um, of, of making a success of um, what you want to achieve. So with that I'm going to hand back over to Jackie, who's going to give you more detail about what the program involves. Thanks, Helen. Okay, the 6M program, uh, we are going to be offering six 45-minute to 60-minute webinars. These will be one a week. The first session will be released on Tuesday, the 26th of August. All the sessions will be recorded and you will have lifetime access. There will also be a live Q&A. Uh, now, we've actually put this on a Friday starting the 28th of August. Uh, I think that's supposed to be the 29th of August, but I think this is actually going to change to an evening, Thursday evening. We will give the time out to you. It's to cover for all of the people that are non-UK based as well. There will also be a one hour one to one Skype call that will be with a person of your choice that will either be with myself, Helen or V. And as I say, that's down to you who you would like. We'll also be providing task sheets throughout the training for you. And then we have a VIP day on the 25th of October, which is a face to face workshop. Uh, this is to get individual feedback 
uh, practice your skills, things like your 60 second pitch, your sales technique, the networking skills, all the things that you've learned over the past six weeks. And it will be done in a closed, comfortable environment so that, you know, we can we can all laugh together or we can cry together. Um, you will be receiving at the end of this a graduation or a completion certificate. And then the bonus, you will receive six months free membership to the IABA on completion. Uh, v, if you want to take it from here, thank you. OK, so now you're probably wondering, what is the cost of all of this? Well, um, we're running this as a pilot program. It's the first time that we've done it. So we're going to um, be doing offering a one-time pilot run price. So it's, um, the next time that we run this, the price is going to go up. So in return, we want motivated individuals, risk takers, who are going to trust us. Um, so we don't want any fence sitters, we want action takers, because this is not a done for you program. You are going to have to be able to um, go out and do stuff, um, the, the stuff that you will be learning from the modules. We're committed to giving you everything that we know how to kickstart your VA business, and we want you to be successful and we will help motivate you. So the cost of the 6M program is 347 you can upgrade to the VIP day, which includes the you know the face-to-face -face training for 497 pounds. So you get the six modules plus the VIP day. Um, now we're running a special promotion. So there's an early bird discount for you people who have attended the call today, and it means that you will get 50 pounds off provided you book within the next 24 hours. Um, so that's £297 for the 6M program or £457 for the VIP upgrade. Now where can you book? So um, this is the URL. So if you go to this URL, Jackie's typed it in the chat box. So you can click on the link there. And there you can um, book online and um, get, take, get your place. Um, if you've got any questions, then do email us at contact us at iava.co.uk. Um, I think um, if, we, if you've got any questions now, you can type them in the chat box and we'll try and field them now. Okay, um, thanks for that, V. We do have a couple of questions here. Um, now, the first one, can I generate a sustainable income? Uh, Helen, do you want to answer that one? Sure, yeah. Um, the short answer is yes, I believe you can. Uh, the slightly longer answer is I think you need to be realistic in terms of how long it might take, um, i.e. it's unlikely to be instantaneous, um, which I think is the, the vast majority of the experience that other VAs in the industry have had as well. Um, however, if you have the right structure in place and you have a plan in place and you know where you're going and you know what you're doing um, and are open to potentially failing as well as succeeding, um, yes, I believe you can. Um, and, and purely personally, I double my income in terms of what I used to earn uh, in my city job. Um, but it has taken six years to do that. So it's a gradual thing. What I would definitely recommend is that you have a cushion of money to see you through um, if you do what I did and give up the day job and throw yourself headlong into your business or another option which I know a lot of people will do is negotiate if you're in a full-time job now if you, there is an option to negotiate down to maybe four days a week initially and and maybe three it just gives you some guarantee of an income at the end of the month Obviously, it depends on what your personal financial priorities are, but it's a really great option. Um, the alternative is what they call the five to niners, so those who work full time and then start their VA businesses in the evening. That's also another option that you might want to consider too. But yes, I believe you can, depending on what your personal financial goals are, um, to create a sustainable income. 
Okay, uh, thanks, Helen. Another question. Uh, when is oh, let's have another. Oh goodness, there's so many of them. What if I can make no? Okay, we've just got. I've had to take the last one here that's just come in. Is it best to specialise services to narrow down target clients or be more widespread and do anything and everything? B? Yeah, I'll quite happily answer that question. I started off doing anything and everything. I actually do think it's, I now have narrowed it down. Um, the reason being is that if you are a specialist in a particular niche area, then you are the specialist and therefore you can charge more. Um, which means that you earn more per hour, which means that you could cut down the hours and have to necessarily work very long hours. Um, so yes, definitely niching into a specialist field um, would be my recommendation um, and is what I do. Um, purely because it means you can charge more, you don't have to rely on having eight hours of work five days a week um, at a lower rate. I feel it's much better to work fewer hours at a higher rate and then if you get extra work in then that's a bonus. Okay, following on from that V, um, can anyone be a virtual assistant? Can anyone be a virtual assistant? Um, if they have a skill, um, if they have a background in as a PA or office manager in a support role then I think the answer is yes, and if they know that they're good at it, then yes. Um, only you could answer that question if you, you know, whether you know that you're good or not. Um, if you're not an organised person, this probably isn't um, the right role for you, because you do need self-discipline, you do need to be organised, um, and you need to be able to organise clients as well, so you need to be assertive as well. So. Um, Yes, with a proviso, yes, anyone can be, but um, they need to have special skills and that they can market and are confident in marketing and talking about them. Okay, thank you. How much to set up, Helen? Oh, how long is a piece of string? Um, <laughs> I, I believe that every startup, um, irrespective of whether it's the VA business business or not good practice is to start it as what what they refer to as a lean startup so you know keep your outgoings as low as you possibly can and if that means not having swanky office furniture then that's what you need to do my desk is from IKEA cost me 60 quid that does me perfectly um, and over time I've changed things a little bit but absolutely I would say be really you know watch those purse strings um, ideally if you can set you know some money aside to get you going to pay for things like you know buying your domain once you've chosen your business name getting a website up no matter how basic it is business cards those things that are going to launch you into market and people can use as a reference point um, <clears throat> But I don't. I really don't think you need a lot of cash to do this. You know, start small uh, and go from there. Keep your eye on those pennies. Would be my advice. Okay, a uh, couple of questions on the actual course here. Um, okay, what's the last day of signing up? That would be the Thursday, the first Q and A. So Thursday Q and A day. Um, we will put that date out again for you. Um, there's That's another Thursday one here. The 28th. Okay. Sorry, yeah, Thursday the 28th of August. Okay. Uh, okay, do we have, are we big enough to have associates or employ other VAs? To run our own business. Um, do you know what I'm going to answer this one, ladies? Go on then. <laughs> okay. And many of the VAs that have been working a number of years now, even you know the, I know a couple of VAs that only started back in March this year, 
And basically, they have associate VAs that they work with. Uh, they don't tend to employ other VAs, but they do have associates that work with them, people that they've met, that they can trust, that they uh, feel comfortable working with. So I hope that answers that question. Yes. That can that can happen right from the beginning. You don't have to have been working for years and years. You you build, go to the meetings, VA meetings, wherever they are. Uh, we do hold them as well. Meet other VAs, get to know them, and they're the people that you generally you would be associating with and working with. Okay, any there are some other can questions I here, but I think add a footnote to yes, that. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. I and again it's just you know, if you're unfamiliar with the VA industry, I would absolutely say, um, it's certainly been my experience, and, and I know that many of other VAs find the same, the vast majority of the VA industry is very much about collaboration rather than competition. Mm. We all have different services to offer, um, and certainly, certainly through the IAVA and the forum we've got here, if you come across a client who needs X doing, you can bet your bottom dollar you'll find someone in the VA community who'll be able to help you with that if you don't have that skill yourself. And that's the perfect opportunity to use an associate. Yeah, thanks, Helen. I must admit that's one of the big, big things in the VA world that generally the majority of us, we all work together. We, we're not against each other. So, OK, I think that's all we have time for. Um, I have left the L there in the chat box. Again, if you've got any other questions for us going forward that we've not answered here or have time to, uh, I've just put in the email in for you. You can contact us at iaba.co.uk and we'll respond to you. And that just leaves me to thank Helen and V for their part in today's webinar. Thank you very much, ladies. Thank you thank to you. all of you who have joined the webinar. I hope that we've managed to answer some of your questions for you. And we look forward to seeing in the future. Look forward, <laughs> sorry, to seeing you in the future. And best wishes to your ventures. Thank you.